Hi, I'm Adam Sessler, and it's my great pleasure to introduce you to a series of videos on a game that is near and dear to my heart, Evolve. It's an asymmetric multiplayer game that pits four hunters of very distinct classes up against one monster that only gets bigger through the course of the match. And it may sound simple and elegant in concept, but turning it into a reality, that's a whole different story. It's a game that needs to be balanced, but the fundamentals of the game are imbalanced. I had the opportunity to sit down with the people at Turtle Rock Studios to get a better sense of what it means to build something like Evolve, something that you'll all get to experience with the Big Alpha. So the concept of asymmetric multiplayer is kind of easy to get your head wrapped around. You don't have clear equities on one side versus the other. But in terms of what that means, in terms of reshaping multiplayer design, I mean, that's, that's pretty significant. I'd love to get both your thoughts about why you decided to, to take on something as ambitious as this and what you felt that that was going to allow you in terms of a creative direction. I think early on we didn't think about that really. We just thought about it would be great to be four hunters tracking this huge monster and it would be great to be this big monster right fighting against these guys so you know we didn't really think about sort of all the technical challenges and all the balance challenges and stuff like that we just sort of wanted those two experiences right and it just so happened that it's kind of in the same game there is something that is innately appealing about sort of not looking i guess at the other side and seeing kind of a reflection of myself seeing right. something yeah. entirely different um i i don't even know if i can put my finger on what's so appealing and exciting about that. Four guys up against a giant monster, right? The four guys, you know, if you're on that team, you feel like the underdog, right? And then as the monster, yes, you're a big, powerful guy, but you're going up against four humans, right? So there's that aspect of, you know, you're also kind of the underdog in from a different perspective. Nobody knows and you can never map out all the ways in which these two things are gonna be different, right? When, when it's very symmetrical and we know that we've got a medic on our team and they've got a medic on their team, we, all, we know how that can play out, right? But the fact that the monster is nothing like the hunters, you never know sort of moment to moment how those differences are gonna work themselves out sort of as a, as a problem. Yes, success doesn't seem to beget more success. I, th I think you see that in a lot of multiplayer games where one team that gets an edge can kind of parlay that into a wider margin and a wider margin. And what I've noticed playing several matches is that you can feel really good about how you're doing and that's kind of all for naught maybe you know five ten minutes later because fortunes can change so quickly yeah we we really made a conscious effort to make sure that you were never out we've seen so many times in like you know hundreds and hundreds of games where you know it was very clearly going to go this one way and you think it's going to go towards a monster's favor or whatever and then something happens in the game we always wanted that scenario of like feeling like yeah we might be down but we can still win this, we can always come back. Playing around with the idea of asymmetry, you know, yes, as we've established, you know, you don't have that sense of equity on, on both sides of the competitive equation, but in addition, you look at Kraken, you look at Goliath, there's not really much parity between those two as well, and then, you start to add in, you know, the various hunters that are in the various classes, and then the options of the perks that you pick, both for the, your, your monster and your hunters. You're looking at a lot of variables. I mean, I think asymmetry actually at that point is just doing a disservice because it's almost a cacophony of, of, of sort of options of how this whole thing can play out. Originally, originally we had just four hunters. Like Phil said, we had a bunch of gear, right? And we wanted the gear to kind of define your role on the team but we always set out to have different species of monsters. And the goal was that playing against one species and playing against a different species would be a whole different game. You have to position yourself differently. You have to move through the map differently. You have to, you want to take different gear. You want to have a different play style and have a different plan as far as teamwork on how to deal with, with that monster, you know? And then from the monster side, obviously playing one that flies, in the example of Kraken versus Goliath, who's, who's ground-based. Kraken can spend, in combat, can spend his entire time in the air. So we really, really wanted it to fundamentally change the game. It does kind of break out from asymmetry to 
this crazy mix of combinations across the board between environments and wildlife and hunters and monsters and perks and buffs and so it gets pretty wild. I can't imagine you just woke up one morning and said, hey, let's take on a lot. <laughs> but as you talk about all the things that you've added to the game in this process, obviously it was fully within your ability to kind of pare this down to something far more simple, but, but you, you went in this exactly opposite direction. It's this weird, big journey that we've gone on over, over the past four years where it really kind of took a, on a life of its own and uh, we always kept steering it, you know, make sure to keep steering it towards the ultimate goal and make sure it didn't go too far to the left or too far to the right, but it was, a, it was this huge collaborative like team process. The idea that, that, that we could have a game that hopefully three years from now, right, when you just, when you've bought some game and it let you down, you know, and it didn't live up to your expectations, you can always be like, you know what, I'm gonna play Evolve, because goddamn, that, game, that game's still fun. All these years of work going after an unconventional take on multiplayer design is about to be put to the test and thousands of players get in on the Big Alpha. Okay, so there's a Big Alpha. And obviously it's a wonderful thing for those who are participating because they get to play a pretty sizable chunk of the game. When you go into something like this, what are you looking for? What are you ho hoping to learn about it? Oh, everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, the so whole, it's just low. It's, it's the whole bonus gamut. expectations. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have 90 people at Turtle Rock Studios right now, and we've got 2K helping out. But really, that's kind of a small. That's a, quite a small player pool, and we know that there's a lot more ways to play the game. It's going to be interesting because we have Kraken and Goliath in this one. So, what's the win ratio, win loss ratio? Is it going to be comparable between between Goliath and Kraken? We just know that no matter how many games we play. You know, there will probably be more games played in the first day of this big alpha than have been played ever in the history of, of Evolve. And then there's also just player feedback, you know, what, what things did they like, what things did they not like. It's interesting to see, you know, and actually essential to see that when you get 100,000 people playing it, do the, do the telemetry numbers stay consistent with what we're seeing? And we know we're not going to get it all right. We know that we're going to come out of this with a lot of notes and right. needing to make a lot of adjustments. Let's go through some of the stuff that is available so that people sort of know what to try out and to try out enough of a variety that you guys can actually get the data. Um, as you said, both Goliath and Kraken are available. Is that just something where the player can just jump in and say, okay, I'm going to play Goliath or I'm going to play Kraken? How, how are they going to be able to select or going to have the opportunity to play the monster? What we're going to be doing is, is really simulating as well as we can right now the release of the game. So, you know, the, we always knew that Kraken flying around is a little bit more challenging than running around on the ground. We felt like we didn't want people to try to learn Kraken and learn how to be a monster at the same time. Goliath is the one who's more straightforward. He, he does all the monstery things you'd expect, but he's, he's a lot of brute force, and that fits really well with your first experience, your first go as a, as a monster player. So you'll have to play Goliath first, and you'll have to successfully use the different abilities. It's like your mom saying, like, you have to, I know, maybe you don't like peas, you gotta try it first. <laughs> try everything on your plate, at least, before you move on to the next character. I, I, I will say, Goliath, Far tastier than peas. <laughs> I, 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 I can say that with a fair amount of confidence. Oh, I like peas. <laughs> um, what are some sort of key pieces of advice for maybe those first two or three matches when people are definitely still babes in the woods? <laughs> yeah, ge generally the bigger something is, the scarier, the more powerful it is. So um, make sure it's a monster before you shoot it. You want to kind of stay together. I mean, if a guy runs off by himself and, and, and trips and falls into you know a mega mouth. Uh, if his buddies aren't there, obviously, you know, that he's going to get swallowed whole. And something that I think that people don't, it takes people a while to figure out is that initially they're just following the tracks, like, but you have to realize that the monster moves more quickly than you do, right? So if you're exactly following those tracks, you'll never catch up. You'll never catch up. And so what you have to start doing is kind of realize, anticipating and, and shortcutting and figuring out he's going this direction, so I'm going to go this direction and we're going to try to head him off at the pass. How does it feel to kind of do a preview introduction of this baby that you've been working on for, for, for so long? I mean, obviously there's some wonderful information to get, but, you know, this, 
you know, they're, 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 it, it must be sort of a complex moment for you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a relief, uh, obviously, and it's also scary at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. you know it's just we've invested so much time and effort, and I think everybody's uh, anxiously nervous. We got a little taste of it with the smaller alpha, but this big alpha is the real deal. Our first version of a uh, Goliath was actually called Scorpid, and it was more like a giant crab. And so we had like these, you had these big claws on the side of the screen. And it looked kind of dopey. And they looked yeah. pretty bad. When you started, did you foresee what it is now? The game has changed so much. The overall idea is what we all thought it would be, but the details were not. It was just us playing this fundamentally good idea and then building on that and making it cooler and cooler.